Welcome back to How Realist Hair Rebuilt the Kingdom, Anime Review Episode 3. This is the third episode of the series, Let Not Me Be a Loyal Minister. Yeah, it's kind of a weirdly grammar title for this episode. This episode basically adapts a little bit from, from basically chapter 2 of the book, so the first book here. Except this one here, this episode, they have like roughly three anime riddle sequences in this one, and they rearrange an entire scene. Though, when the first portion of the scene, and they also made a big cut in this particular episode, yes, they cut like a small portion of the chapter out. The episode starts off with a completely anime riddle sequence. That probably, hang I don't know if this happened in the book at all, because I don't remember, I didn't reread re that far. Because I've been rereading the book to see how much the book they covered for like one episode. And this episode, they actually cut it like almost 10 pages of this chapter from this episode. Like they basically skipped over sequence that probably going to do for next week. So, basically the first portion is all about language. My guess is they're probably going for what they did for last week. Explain the whole mythology behind the country of where Sotoma is in. And explain the fact that he has sort of basically the ability to sort of auto-translate. As sort of a hero transfer thing. I'm like, okay, that's actually quite neat. And then we cut to Larishia just waking up from her bed. And, and in case you're wondering, no, she's not naked. She's in a nightgown. And she looks out the window. And, of course, the, one of the maids comes in. And she points out the princess is blushing. Probably due to the fact that it, it's heavily suspect at this point that she's got a thing for the king. Obviously. So, she gets dressed. You see sort of her basically dressing up and pointing out that, oh yeah, there's a lot of people showing up here for this. People getting screened. Now, there's actually a portion of the book they actually cut out here. Because it was mentioned there was actually a series of contests going on. Like a beauty pageant, a combat exp expedition, stuff like that. Here, they don't have those at all. It's like they probably did happen, but they probably mentioned it happened off screen. But that's not here in this episode. Right afterwards, we have Poncho with Harcrow. He's the guy in the Japanese, well, robes. Yeah, Poncho himself, really, he's actually in the scene itself. And, of course, he's very nervous. They also add some little bits to him here in this episode. Like, and then we cut to the actual first time we see Sotom in the episode fully. Now, this scene, this next portion is in the book itself, where Alicia, uh, Alicia, that, 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 that's the name of the dark elf who's here. They actually do have it. Now, the scene itself is pretty much played exactly the way in the, in the book itself, except they actually added something here. Yes, they actually have a reaction to Poncho. Where they think that they're talking to him. Nope, they're talking to the Dark Elf. Mostly put in the way her dialogue is mostly the same. Except a couple little bits of dialogue. Where no woman would basically have for no man. Unless of course their husband. And the only part they kept in was basically. The fact that she won't have anybody unless it's their master. That part was kept in. But a lot of her portion of this dialogue for this scene was actually cut for some reason. Probably could do pacing. And... Then we have the order of people coming. Now there's five people. We have her, Julia, Toma, Pancho, and Hamura. Now in the book itself, the order is completely different. Now, uh, the dark elf Alicia, that Alicia, that she is the first one. Basically, her going first is in the book itself. That part they kept in, except they cut out like a big portion of her dialogue from this scene, like, like mentioning about food rations. Like, here it's like, okay, like, we had trouble talking. They're basically talking about the, the, the forest itself, where mostly trees are basically, like, going so vacant, while well, young ones grow. And so was like, okay, why not just basically thin it? Excuse me. And, well, they discuss it for a bit, and that's it. In the manga, it's a little more dialogue here. My guess is that a lot of dialogue for this portion of the scene was cut due to time constraints. Yes, they probably didn't want to drag a scene for too long. And then right afterwards, now in the book itself, Hirotuo is actually the next one to go up. Instead, they go with Juvio, uh, Juvia. She, beautiful woman. Now, I should point out though, her thing with her is mostly intact. 
I would say they make no changes with her. And I would say the only slight change is a little bit later. Now, of course, Lucia basically, yes, yeah, she does give Sosima a glaring look like, don't worry, I haven't forgot my job here. <laughs> yeah, there's no denying. This woman is hot. Oh my gosh, yes. And, like, basically, I mentioned one thing about Lorelai, the fact she's basically a singer by blood, which that's cool. And then, of course, Sosima takes out a Bluetooth earbud and has her listen to it. Now, yes, this portion did happen in the book itself. Except there may be a slight change here. And you're probably thinking, what was the change? In the book, she removed the actual earbud from her ear. In the anime, Sultima does himself. I'm not really sure exactly why this was changed for. What's wrong with her doing herself? And after, now they don't really identify what song it is. In the book, they mention it's a children's song. In the episode, they don't really say what the episode is, what the name of the song is. Like, she sings it, and basically she asks her an, er an energy, energizing song. Her song basically makes people smooth, like, like, somberish. And here's, like, very, very, like, upbeat. And it's a very good song. And he's got to praise it for that. And then next came Poncho. Poncho in the book itself actually came, I think it was after Hirotama. That's basically... The way it was in the book. Here they have him next. And most of the scene is mostly kept intact. I'd say there's nothing really much change here. And I appreciate that. I mean, as soon as I got like, oh yeah, it's Poncho. Yes, I knew exactly who this character was just by looking at him. And plus because of the book itself. Now, if you might be asking, Nick, does this guy really play a role in the book at all? Aside from this scene, no, he doesn't do much of anything. Oh, before I continue here, there's a brief anime original sequence here. Where they go to the, the Principality of Armenia. Yeah, that, that's next door country. Where they see a female merchant there. Which I should point out, this woman is actually the princess of the country. Yes, they actually don't reveal this to book four. But the only reason why I know that, because I've read the book. That's why I know that. And I'm not going to spoil what goes on with her and Sultima until the anime gets to it. But I am going to spoil the fact she's a princess. And basically she's gathering intelligence here. While, yeah, basically with these specially sealed letters. That's the whole point of that particular scene. It happened just before the contest. But I had to bring it up here. And Poncho, the actual little thing where he basically was very nervous before the whole ceremony. And Hero basically was thinking that basically if this guy basically judge... Excuse me, he mentions later on that basically that he would make his decision if Sultan was a worldly ruler based upon Poncho. That was really the reason for that. And, like, so, basically, based upon his knowledge, basically, he does. Now, he does play a role in the next few books of the series. Yes, he does play the next... Uh, there's also a brief little scene here of one, one of the one of the three dukedoms. Yes, uh, I believe it's the one who's in charge of the Navy. She makes appearance in the episode very briefly. And, nice to see her. Yeah, the whole point of her is a tease book, too. That's the whole point of it. I don't remember if they actually, if that scene's from the book and all, it, it's been a little while since I read the rest of the book. I just read basically what I can tell from what, what the book, I've just been rereading what portions of the book that I think they were adapted for the anime. That's basically what I'm doing. So, in the case of, or he's actually up position a librarian, and he's just wanted to do milk trash instead. And they actually hint at stuff basically later on. Like, having Sultan wear a military uniform. That's something he actually wears, I believe, in Book 2. And mentioning he become a good, good right hand for, for Sultima. I don't know if they decided to pull this early for the anime. Basically, mention something that happens in, like, the next book. Next few books. I'm not really sure why they decided to include this for. But they did. They decided to include some stuff that happens later on in, in the series. Yes, I'm not really sure why. Maybe that JC staff probably didn't have faith the fact this series might actually last more than one season. So hand that stuff probably later. Or the fact they might hope they get a second season out of this. That's possible. And so basically discuss, oh yeah, we're, we're going to have the meeting later on. Which they mentioned they do have the meeting later and he becomes the official right hand man of the king. Now, as for Tomi. Now, her thing is happening toward the very last bit of the episode. Basically, this first portion of the scene basically is just, just pretty much happens the same. Where basically she explained explain her gift 
And the, then Sultima goes and gets basically hangs into here. And then she whispers something in his ear and it gets attention. And that's where the episode ends. In the book itself, they actually had to take, like, this is actually hint at something you might will see next week. Basically explaining what her other gift, uh, what other her little talk of gift gab basically doing. Uh, they actually probably gonna see it for next week. Hopefully, it doesn't take like ha- whole episode to have that one sequence, because in the book itself, this took up ten pages in the book. This whole little sequence of this little sidebar, this this break for thirty minutes, which it was right after that. That's when they had the poncho. That's when they had the. That's when they had Poncho and Hirodoma. They had their, their scenes right afterwards. Not really sure why they moved her to the very end of the episode. Probably for a good cliffing of them. That's my personal guess. But if you're going to ask me, like, did I think that cutting out the dialogue for Alicia was was that for... Do I think the time constraints were necessary? Yes, because this thing dragged out for a little while in the books. So I think they probably want to speed it along a little bit. And the singing sequence is fantastic. It's probably by far the best sequence of the whole episode is the song. And it's done really well. And basically, in inside the episode itself... It's received pretty well, and I think that the the actors did a really good job doing this particular scene. Yep, that's pretty much it that I can think of. One thing I'm not liking with this series so far, there's no, like, what well, I can see on the Funimation website, that they're not actually having any, let's just say, any teasers for the next week's episode. A lot of the anime I do watch generally do. This is one of those very few that don't even have it at all. It's like, the thing just stops right there. Yes. But am I looking forward next week? Oh yes, definitely. The next week episode is going to be called Index Figure Move. Yes. Yeah, but the titles of the next few episodes are interesting to say the least. Yes, but I'll find out more over the next few weeks. Now, I have heard also, I saw online, apparently this is confirmed for 13 episodes and so far, they adapted mostly about the first 70, 73 pages of the book out of, I think it's like, lower, I think it's like 237, I think it is. So, they're slowly getting through this book, so maybe next week they'll probably go through a little, a little more in the book. Who knows, okay? So, yeah, that's a particular view. Next view, case study of Atlantis. And then case closed, and that'll be it for today, okay? So, next video. Bye.